Can everybody hear me? And the ones who come, it will be a good answer. <laughs> uh, welcome to the palace of a thousand delights. When I was first asked to speak here, I, two things came to mind. First of all, I had to do my best to honour the memory of Roland Bibby and other founder members of the Northumbrian Language Society. And second, I would do my best to entertain. And when you leave here, I hope you'll feel that it was worthwhile coming. Now, I'll be speaking in standard English with an accent, which is more important now than it ever was. Because at one time, people born and raised in Ashton and other colliery towns never moved. They lived, they worked, they played, they socialised in the same town. So they hadn't any reason to change their dialect. And they all talk like this all the time. Because their mothers talk like that all the time. But now we live in a smaller world. And it's necessary for the Northumbrian dialect and the people who speak it to adapt. And that's exactly what they've been doing for several years now. Now, Pitmatic is not a complete language. It's words and phrases and expressions, but it's dying out very fast, unfortunately. So, what you hear tonight at the beginning of my renditions will be maybe the last Pitmatic you'll hear. Now, there's the Northumbrian language, which, or speech, which is a complete language, and the standard English with an accent, which I'm speaking now, which is just as important as Northumbrian, because when it's spoken by a Northumbrian, standard English with an accent, the vowel sounds are so strong, and the inflection in the voice is up and down, just like normal, most of the time. It sounds more Northumbrian than standard English. Now, I would like to begin with something I wrote with my dad about over 50 years ago. Just a short piece. But to set the, the seeds for what I'm going to do. I like the first three words especially. The language snob fails to realize how, in what conditions of danger, hardship, and general rigor, the Northumbrian language has evolved, and how well it has served its purpose. It is the language of action and not of the mind, like our standard English. And in the field of action, the factory, the workshop floor, the shipyard, and in days gone by, the pits. It is still the best tool for speed of instruction, for brevity, lucidity, and direction. It calls a spear to spear, or a spear to spear, and that's why. It leaves no room for equivocation, elaboration, or fine shades of meaning. It is still robust, virile, emphatic, and rough. But even in its roughness, more readily freighted with common human feeling than perhaps even our highly efficient standard English. And I'll show you why shortly. It has evolved over the long period when North America was in the front line of raiding and warring nations, constantly under alarm because of ruthless raiders from the sea. A dialect is a speech in which the vowel sounds peculiar to a geographical area are heard. The Northumbrian language is not a dialect, but a speech made of old English Anglo-Saxon words with a canny few Scandinavian words heard in, and their enriched war language. And to finish, when the Northumbrian speaks here, you see, he's talking English sense and history. He doesn't wave or well gesticulations. He just what he means by intonations. And rusty ancient words 
that was to tell a clear cut revelation, quick and plain. Nor from his language is a grand creation. It's warm, alive, and full of animation. By the and check note of the blue sky blent with the hills. See the spookies and the nukes from night to a island time. For Nance the Cree and the Mule the Hamel will have a paint. And back to ourselves, time we'll watch what one of the fallen bellies brought of a muckle yacht in size. Then we'll check what pipe and blend here, time the reef games with. And set what dogs and have the pitly mates and forget about this veil wall. And yet, with the goodies and the puppy on our crowds, and our feckless cries, and the open yells and dungeon cronies of the glasses. The bone and bone is called the Jew with the distension plots and sweat. Is it locks, wheels, and blathers, and coaxes, and squeals? The hopping bones are all a gaffa, the itchy dabba, and skedaddling doing the swally of the soft low. But the legs are decent. You don't feel this shock of the yarping babies. The techies for them seem to be home. The bowlers are stopping to the lowlands day, popping our snitches in the pitly beds. The musty yarps smell piff. The arch on the pocket, fishing, is checking a deep at the barry and oats when he's showing all his yarries and slowing his blue meal. He's just catched half a dozen yarps in truth off the bell end. But he's always stingy to get a one. So when I get there in the need for me bed, I had a big deal with me stocky tip with a bit dripping, and for me pood, a bit spotty dick. So there. <laughs> <laughs> excitement in our voice. And the best way to do that is to exaggerate the inflection in the voice if you know what I mean. Linux speak. It's called the Lin, which is the Norwegian word for when I have. Up the dale a hordes flashing, merry laughter of the Lin. Such a slashing, leaping, dashing, such a gushing, gurgling din. Such a low to mention to him, where the wetters glint and flash, such a thundering, frenzy jumbling in an errand wetter clash. In such ululation smother, dancing, blethering, wetter sprites, gleeful, ululating bother in your helter skelter flights. Ping, ping, pitsy, cardinal globules. Mingled with the deep pool plops, where battalions of bubbles battle hordes of silver drops. Oh, the wild stampede and wet as all the youth crops leap and free, floating all your hill rock fetters. What a joy ye spill on me! Either magic of the sun kissed their bone globules glistening there, where the airy fairy clueless is be diamond it's a fair. Let me fancies Algan women with the charms of sight and sound, like an uncaged limpy singing or a dungeon slave unwound. <laughs> I think about you all the time. I dream about you too. And when I walk or drink or eat, I think only of you. When I'm outside and playing golf or on the tennis courts, whacking, tacking, laughing, joking, it's you who fill me thoughts. And when I'm in the swimming pool or floating in the sea or boating on the river, you're the only one I see. I see your image in the mirror when I'm washing sheer. I see you on his hilltop high and in his wrecking wheel. I see you on the bus. And your faces on each ticket, 
And when I watch a cricket match, you all stand in the way. In a football match, you fill me thoughts. I write through the game. At half time, I see a likeness of a lass who has your name. You're here, you're there, you're everywhere. And to the left and right, and even in the dark of night, you're never out of sight. I see you on the TV screen, right next to our Joe Wayne. Who hopefully broke our Betty Davis, even like the king. I hear your voice on radio, my eyes as clear as crystal. And if a gun comes off, I hear you, and not the pistol. But I'll forget you. Aye, I will. And then I'll close the lid. The moment that you pay me back that 50 bloody <laughs> quid. <laughs> When I look into your mind, there seems no there akin to humankind. When you snapped off your own tree, I could have cried. Your manhood there committed suicide. Just think of what that bobby tree could be. A thing of joy for our posterity. The stone you avoid brings darkness to the hell. You can smash the light within yourself. Look at yourself, poor lad, and you'll see there a reasonless insanity laid there. Scott, Dane, and Norseman were the enemy. But they were not as reasonless as he. Yea, our heirs were hopes, for we loved him. You shouldn't be the enemy. Within, oh, spare your phone box, light, shop window, tree. Man's a creator. What does that make ye? <laughs> the Northumbrian dialect is part of the Northumbrian's culture part of his way of life, part of a way of life that has to do with personal things, like very close friends. You can speak to them in your own way and they'll understand, whereas outsiders who don't understand the dialect will not understand. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way of having an identity. Mm -hmm. Very important. That's why it's such an important part of the culture. Yeah. And you were saying before. Oh, yeah, you were saying before that um, uh, Pitmatic has almost died out. Yeah. But are the prospects better for Northumbrian? Oh yeah. Northumbrian's changing to suit the modern world. That's why I stressed the importance of standard English with an accent because with the Northumbrian vowel sounds and the inflection in the voice and the shortening of some words like A and D is just N like fish and chips uh, it's changing but it won't die out no. but it's changing because it has to it's very adaptable yeah. uh, so the, the prospects for the future of the Northumbrian language are good? excellent but it'll change as it is now.